I'm standing outside the Roxy Theater, right off of Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. And we're standing here actually with the Sneaker Pimps. These guys are awesome. They're over from Britain, doing a, I guess doing a little tour here, playing at the Roxy tonight. Um, so thanks a lot for being here, guys. It's a pleasure. All right, now I want to ask you some questions. The first thing, uh, you've obviously made it in the music world. Your music's great, and uh, I, I, I consider you successful. I'm sure you guys do, too. So when in your life did you guys know that music was going to be your full-time gig? That's what, that's, just, uh, that's what you wanted to do. I think that's different for all of us. Um, I know that um, I kind of just went with it and I learned a couple of instruments when I was maybe about 13, 14 and um, then I went to college and I dropped out of college and, and here I am. But um, I think Dave kind of knew when he was about one that no, I, he... I just always... I, my dad was a drummer and I played drums when I was a little kid and I sort of just always knew I was going to... I never doubted for a second that I was going to be a drummer. Right. <clears throat> Not necessarily a successful one, but um, I knew that that was what I would do. All right. So. When did, uh, you know, for the viewers that don't know, mm. when did you guys come together, you know, at, as a band? Um, about 95, I think, 90s. vaguely. Yeah. Actually, yeah. touring, probably 96, but yeah. the album was sort of completed in 95 and we started touring and, and we gathered the band about 96. Yeah. And now, did you guys all go to school when you were younger? Did you know each other? How did you come together? Kind of. It's a bit, a bit messy. But, Is that right? Uh, yeah. Um, Liam, who isn't here at the moment, he was my friend from an early age, and um, he knew these guys. He went to art college with them, and um, I was doing music with him, and we found these guys, and, and here we are. Great, that's cool. So now, uh, what's the most fun part of being and being in a band and touring over the, you know, around the world, playing in places like this? Well, what's the best part? The, the best bit is you just get to see places that you normally wouldn't have an opportunity to see, really. So it is, is the straightforward travel side of it, which, while it can be very sort of tiring, it still means, I mean, certainly the places we've been as a band, you know, I, uh, as an individual, I would have never had an opportunity to go to, so say somewhere like Japan or something. Where, right. Whereas I may not have always wanted to go be in a band, but I always wanted to go to Japan. So, yeah. I mean, there's there's... Those, that kind of side of it is, is, is really sort of special. Cool. It's also, it, it, touring also gives you the highs and the lows for a kind of healthy, creative outlook, I think. You know? Right. So that's what I get from it, I think. All right. Now, what, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's fun, but it's got its, I'm sure it's got its hardships, and there's some of it's not always the greatest. So what's the hardest part of being in a band and, you know, I guess constantly working on new music and touring around playing? What's the hardest part? It's sort of like the same answer that we just gave in a way. It's like everything, one day doing something that it can take so long, and you do so much in one day. In the space of one day, we've kind of played a gig in New York City, got drunk, sobered up, got on a flight, came to LA, and we're setting up a second gig, and we've done all that, and it's, it's just... kind of like a blur after a while. Yeah, so yeah. that all happens so quickly, and if you're in the mood for that, it's fantastic, and you can really get a lot of adrenaline from it, but if you're not in the right mood, then uh, it just makes you want to go to bed. Right. How do you... Uh, do you guys still get nervous? I mean, I imagine being up in front of all these people, playing your music, I mean... Strangely enough, <laughs> no, I've never been nervous. Wow. I think, well, we're maybe a couple of times, we're really sort of high pressure gigs maybe um, where it's been really important there's been a few nerves but I don't really get it I really? don't know why I think it's just I, don't know, I, f I find it so enjoyable get and like an adrenaline rush yeah very yeah. much yeah. so do you guys have any ritual before you start playing anything you do every time and kind of like <laughs> get together and scream and holler drink. and drink yeah <laughs> drinks away um, yeah and we don't we're not we're, uh, we're very English so we don't do that kind of thing um, yeah but we, we, we sort of, I suppose, stare intensely at each other and kind of go, you ready? See who's going to crack first. Yeah, under <laughs> the pressure. That's cool. So, uh, what's your favorite part of the world that you've played in? I mean, I guess you've been all over. What's the, what's the best part? Um, oh, I think Japan, as Joe mentioned, is, was a fantastic place to go to. Uh, also, Australia, uh, for me, was, was uh, amazing. We did, we've kind of, America, we've done 
quite a lot of now, so it's still the, there's a novelty in some of these other places you go to less right. frequently. So right. Australia, I'll say. Yeah, that's that's cool. I, yeah, I wish they, I've never been I, outside. I mean, I've been outside the U.S. a little bit, but to get the tour around seems pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, so, cool. Um, what are your thoughts on MP3s? Because I know that you guys actually did something pretty cool. A lot of bands are like, oh, MP3s are the devil. They're going to take all of our money and all this. But you guys actually pre-released some of your tracks from uh, Bloodsport uh, mm. almost a year before your album came out, which was pretty cool. So. Yeah, that was that was, was um, kind of reacting against the system because it was very hard for us to get a record out at that time. Um, we were going through a lot of troubles with um, the record industry and our company and stuff. So it seemed like a really good thing to do. And um, no, we're, we're, we, ex we embrace it completely, I think. Right. So do you I mean? Do you feel that MP3s take away from your from your sales? You no, know, it's very good promotion. Yeah. I think, and and you know, people are going to get it. So yeah, it's an optimistic way no, of looking yeah, at it. Yeah, there's no point know? in being kind of defensive about it. That's, that's awesome. All right. Well, let's um, before we move into the advice, I've got one more question for you guys. I want to know what the songwriting process is like, because I know you write your own stuff. And I know usually bands work on one record before you know we'll, they spend all the time on one record. But are you constantly working on like right now, or could you be writing right now? Are you constantly working on new ideas, new songs? We do, yeah. I think uh, we're not your typical band because we um, we all produce our own music. We do separate projects aside from Sneaker Pimps as well. And on the road, we have kind of tools that allow us to to write new new music and produce new music. So we're constantly doing it. Um, when we don't. You know, we don't make big blocks of time where we go back and say, right, we're going to go in the studio for now. And so it's always flowing, which is good. I think it's the only way we can really survive because we're that kind of band. So now let's move into the advice. You know, I have a lot of friends that are in high school, they have their own bands, you know, come together, all different styles, you know, whether it be heavy metal, contemporary, you know, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, some of them do it as a hobby. Others of them really want to be where you guys are, where one day that, that's their profession. You know, as a yeah. profession, they want to be successful, uh, you know, a band. So what's your advice? I mean, off the top of your head, what would you tell them now that you're here, looking back on your past, <clears throat> what, would, what's, what would you tell them? Coming out of high school, coming out of college, what do you think they should do to become successful? I would say try and um, be uh, try and be slightly experimental with your emotional side. Um, be very confident with your own creativity and just really put a lot of work in. It's quite hard. Okay. That's mine. What about for you? What do you think? For I think um, it's kind of it's, it's very important to be flexible that if you spend your whole time going this is exactly the kind of music I'm going to make, or, or um, I'm only going to make music. Then, then you you you're either going to be very disappointed, or or you're going to get stuck in a rut very quickly. So I think it's it's kind of it's it's, it's quite important that you can go. Or well, maybe there are other things I can be doing at the same time. But it, that you'd be surprised how much time you really have, even if you are doing it sort of all the time. There's right. always other things you can be doing. You know, try writing a book or something. Huh. Um, to be yeah, kind I mean, of flexible about your output. Really. Yeah, uh, flexible in the sense of, of probably uh, maybe playing a few instruments as opposed to just, just one. one and, right. You know, and I think you know, spread your wings a little bit because mm -hmm. it gives you much more opportunity. I think. The point is, it's much better to be enthusiastic about doing something than worrying about whether you're any good at it. So right. there are loads of people who spend 50 hours a day practicing a guitar and just learning to do really fast scales or something, and that that won't help you write a great song or. or feel happy about yourself, so All right. um, just try other things. You know. What about you? What do you think? For I knew you were going to come to me now. Yeah, absolutely. No, I want everybody's I'm advice. <laughs> I, I just think, um, sort of know the value of, of your own ideas and don't sort of necessarily, your ideas might appear a little off the wall or they might not fit in or they might not be ideas that could make money very easily, but I think if they're ideas that you... Um, that are uniquely yours, then that's all you've got. There's no point pretending to be someone else in order to try and become successful. Yeah. Okay. Now, what, what about advice for teens that want to become discovered? I um, mean, how were you guys discovered? Um, we were. We basically started um, producing records instead of. We weren't in a band really, uh, as such. When we started out, we were in a bedroom, you know, doing sort of underground dance music and putting out our own, you know, 500 white labels or something like that. Right. Sort of. And that was quite a healthy way to start because it means you go around all the, all the DJ shops and, and it's a foot in the door, you know. You don't just send a demo and people ignore it. So you get it out, people buy it, and then, and then probably the next step would be to make a more kind of developed demo. 
and take it to the right people. I don't know. It's, it's we were quite lucky, I suppose. Right. Um, but you need a bit of luck. I mean, yeah. it's just well, I'm with today. Advantage of MP3 again. I mean, yeah, that, MP3 yeah, wasn't yeah. around when we, we did it. Yeah, so I was going to say, with today's technology, I know that you know you can you can you can almost buy your own production equipment. Yeah. And in your own yeah. house, and record your own labels, and and so I guess what would you say? Record your own label, put on MP3. Do you suggest sending them to, blindly to labels, or how should you do that? Try and set up a website. I think if you set up start website. off by setting up your own website, which is relatively easy to do, and then then that can always be a base that then you can direct other people like record companies too. Right. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's probably healthy to create some sort of kind of little scene um, where maybe there's a collective. Um, a collection of people doing things which will draw record companies to you instead of because not I mean the amount of times you send things to people they're just completely ignored and um, you've really got them got to get them to come to you um, so I would create a little scene first myself okay. and don't expect I've got to phrase this carefully don't, don't expect record companies to be um, necessarily very proactive or even right. interested in music because they're Pretty lazy, unimaginative people most of the time. Yeah. Apart from ours, of course, who are all wonderful. Um, <laughs> but um, if you just imagine a kind of um, half-drunk record company executive sitting at his desk on a wet Tuesday morning, mm -hmm. with a pile of tapes this high, you've just got to make sure whatever you've got is the one thing that he's interested in looking right. at or listening to. So try and try and make it different. Try and present things in an imaginative and different mm. way. Don't seem desperate. As Don't well. seem desperate. It's, they can smell desperation. Is that right? Yeah. All right, well, I think that pretty much wraps it up. We got some cool questions from you guys. We got your advice. Any final words of wisdom for the teenagers out there that want to aspire to be musicians one day? Any, any other thing? Any, anything you guys have learned? Maybe any, any, <laughs> anything you've learned from your experience that you want to tell them not to do as, as they're coming? Don't trust anyone over 30. <laughs> Don't trust anyone over 30. I, I like that one. I like that one. Anything oh, else? Anything God. you guys have experienced? Um, ooh, too much. Too much to choose, <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, I don't want to go there, so I think it's a don't bit too... Whatever it was, you were um, <laughs> I want to be responsible, so okay. I'll say it. Well, I'm learning. Okay, sounds good. Sure. So, it, thanks a lot, guys. It's been okay. a pleasure meeting thanks you guys. So pleasure yeah. interviewing you. Thank and you thanks too. a lot for helping teenagers here in the U.S. Uh, to kind of learn out where they're, learn where they're going in the world. All right, no problem at all. Thanks again, and we'll be seeing you in there. Yeah, right, enjoy the show. Okay. Thanks, guys. You got